Hi, I'm back, and today I'm going to be talking about what I use for oil paints. Last time it was inexpensive watercolor paints or water-based paints, and today I'm talking about oil paints. I don't buy the oil paint in a tube. It's way too expensive. It can cost anywhere from $20 to $100 per tube. For me to do a large painting, and I do like to do large paintings, um, that, that can really add up very fast. I, th I like a lot of texture in my paint as well, so you know, I just can't afford to paint that way. And I like the results with what I get. Uh, the paints that I use are ar archival, which means that they'll stand up to years of sun and temperature, temperature changes and things like that. And that can be important because you want your whites to stay white, you want your yellows to stay yellow, you don't want your reds to darken too much and things like that. The paints that I use are ar archival and um, I saw over the, a few years ago someone was saying that they weren't but I've not experienced that and I've had paintings for years that have not changed. So I tend to believe that they are ar archival and I'm going with that because first of all I can afford them and I do like the results. I like using them. The paints that I use are called paint sticks. Now you can buy paint sticks at Michael's and for one about the size of my finger you're going to pay about fifteen, sixteen, seventeen dollars depending on the color. Or you can go online and there's a French company and for this about the size of my pinky finger they're twenty dollars. And again it's the same paint. Um, all paint is, all oil paint is first of all First of all, is pigment, which is usually a chemical, like a, a mineral, like iron might make green, things like that. Um, or it could be an ash. And they mix it with oil. Generally, um, I've heard they use, can use cottonseed oil or boiled linseed oil, things like that. Now, the, paint, the company that I found that provides the paint that I like comes like this made in the USA yay for that and they're all weather paint sticks the reason that they need to be all weather which is great because it means they're archival there if it's going to be able to hold up to weather then you know it's going to be able to hold up to a little bit of sunshine hitting it when it's on your wall if you look closely you'll see it says livestock markers. These are markers that farmers and cattlemen use to mark their livestock when they're ready to breed or when um, they've been vaccinated and they'll just take one of these paint sticks and they'll rub it on the rub it on the animal's backside and it'll last and it'll last through the weather. I saw one woman had put on a review for these paint sticks saying that during Hurricane Matthew down here in Florida, she had written her phone number on the side of her horse. And she was glad she did because the horse was found 20 miles away and her phone number was still intact, written on its, on its side. So that's what they're used for. But they are in fact the exact same paint markers that you're going to get at Michael's. They're just in a different size twice the size really and they come in this with this cardboard around it and I generally just take that off it's not needed at all now to use these it's really just like a big fat crayon that's I'd say three times softer than a crayon someplace between like hard lipstick and if you've ever driven, drawn with lipstick, you know it's just such an amazing feeling because it glides and it's just so nice and smooth. It's, and oh, oh, one of the best things about this is because it's used for livestock, it has to be non-toxic. And since I use my hands when I'm painting, and most people are gonna get some paint on them, um, you do want your paints to be non-toxic. Whereas most paints are not. The paints in the tubes will not tell you that they're non-toxic 
because they will contain toxic chemicals. But since these are used on livestock that people are going to eat, the FDA says it has to be good to eat and non-toxic. So that's another plus. Let me show you how I use these. Oh, and I didn't tell you the price. I'm sorry. Let me get back to that. The main reason I use these, well, there's two reasons. Again, I do like working with them. Also, these are a dollar to a dollar nineteen. Actually, some of these I believe are about seventy-eight cents a piece. I can do a very large painting and not even use a half of one of these. So yeah, they're worth it because you can either get this or you can go to Michael's and pay, they don't even sell them this size, but 15 to $20 a stick. And red is always very more expensive. These, the red I believe is $1.19. The pigment in reds is very expensive to make and some of the blues as well. But the pigments in these are so strong that if you add this to white, it's not going to be pink. It's going to be red. You have to add very, very little. And the black is merciless. The pigment in the black is so strong that if I put a dot of black on something, it, it, I have to be very, very careful. You have to really back off because the pigments are so strong, which is a good thing because in cheap paint, you don't find good pigments. Okay, in order to use this paint, you can see that again, I'll take off the cardboard tube here for you. You can see it's very dry looking. I'm not getting anything on my hands here. No matter what I do, I'm not going to get anything on my hands. Because this is how they come. This is how they're supposed to come. And it's a protective layer of paint that forms over it, a skin that forms over it when it dries. So let me show you some of my well-loved pieces here. I've got a bag, rather than cut that one open, I've got a bag here filled with all my well-loved pieces. Here's a chunk right here. This is red, believe it or not. It's got all different colors on it. But in order to get that skin off, it's really, really simple and kind of fun. You just push it with your thumb. Let me see if I can get a good shot here. I just push it with my thumb and it slides off, you see? And then I peel that part off. I have a little container here I'm going to throw it into. And here I'll peel this side off. And you can just cut a chunk off. I generally won't use a whole, a big stick unless I'm doing a really large piece and I just want to get down to business. But you can see I'm peeling all this off and it's actually kind of calming to me. I like doing it. You know, I like getting my hands dirty anyway, so this is this is fine with me. You can also use a palette knife and just peel it off with your palette knife if you're not into getting paint on your hands and it comes right off. There's not a lot of preparation, but there is some. And again, I kind of like that because I like getting my hands into what I do. Just throw that away. Okay, so to start a painting, well, let me show you how well these colors blend and how you work with them. There's several ways to work with them. You could draw with it just like a crayon, again. And then you're going to get almost a crayon effect where um, there's like white spots on the canvas. Or you could spudge that with your finger. I'll show you. I'm working on a piece right now for my brother. I've just started. Right now I just have it taped off because it's a really a piece with a lot of angles and I really didn't feel like messing with a lot of straight lines. So I taped off where I'm not going to put anything. Here's the, let me pull this over. Here's the painting I'm going to be working on for my brother. My 
baby brother, Eric. <laughs> the baby brother's like 50. And this is a dock that goes off like that. And I really wanted a sharp line for the horizon here and some sharp lines down here. So that's what all the tape is about. This painting is of a sunset. I'll pull it up on my phone. I'm not sure you can see it. There's a place that he likes to go called Sebastian Inlet. And that's Sebastian Inlet where he fishes. So that's what I'm going for. And this sunset up here is what I'm going to show you how, how, how I would start that. And you can see there's lots of oranges and yellows, blue, a little bit of gray, maybe some lavender in there. So that's what I'm going for. These paints do come in many colors. Here's a nice pink. I love the pink. I use it to death. The orange is really nice too. Ooh, that's pink again. Where's my orange? There's some yellow. I'm telling you, it doesn't take much, so. There's some orange right here. And again, it doesn't look orange because it's got other paints all over it, but it will once I take the skin off. So here we go. I'm just going to pull the skin off here. Go around the side a little bit. I don't want to take it all off because that would just waste it. in my bucket here. Got your fingers off. Now I'll show you how it's going to look. It looks kind of like a crayon when you first draw it on. I just want to look at the colors on this one more time. Okay, it's darker orange right along this horizon here. <coughs> right along this horizon it's darker orange. So I'm just going to Fill in right here, darker orange. And go right like that. Right along this line, this horizon line. And then there's a little orange up here. And you can see it almost looks like a crayon if I get close. But if I smudge it with my finger, it fills it in and no longer looks like crayon. It looks more like a paint stroke. You see? Pardon my camera. I need a cameraman, I think. <laughs> so that's the orange. And there's a lot of yellow in that painting. So I'm going to take the skin off this yellow. And this was just cut off of a big, bigger one. And sometimes it's good to have a little point on what you're doing. And I'll cut my pieces to a point sometimes just for that reason. I'm going to need a lot of this yellow, so I'm taking all the skin off of this. And again, it's something I enjoy. Maybe you wouldn't, but I really do. It's very relaxing to me. Okay, so here I'm going to color the yellows in here. And there's actually a lot of yellow below this waterline. So I'm going to put this down here as well. And <laughs> this is pretty much how I use it. Now this, you can see, I mean, this isn't blending beautifully, is it? But with the addition of some boiled linseed oil. Now this is something else you don't want to get at, a, at an art supply store. This can, I believe, is about $6 if you get it at Home Depot. Or you can go to Michael's and get a can about this big. I believe they're like six ounces and they're about $15. Go to Home Depot. It's the exact same thing. Boiled linseed oil is going to thin this paint down to do what I want. And I put it into this little dropper that I put in a cup so it doesn't knock over. And I'm going to drop some paint on there. And I do use my hands when I paint. That painting up 
that I showed you earlier. I, I didn't touch a brush to that at all. Every once in a while I will pull a brush out. I have a lot of really nice brushes, but... Oops. Okay, now watch this blend. It's going to do anything I want it to do, really. I want this orange pulled up here. And the, or the oil makes it so nice and slick on the canvas. This area here is dark, so that's why I'm not going down there. There we are in the picture. And I'll blend this orange. Watch what this is going to do. It's just stunning how you can get this stuff to work. I can get striations into it by just dragging my fingers. Let's see if I can get closer for you. And spread the color. I hate those middle bars. <laughs> that is a problem when I'm painting with my fingers. Is I tend to push and I get a line on those middle bars. I pull this paint up. Pull some of this orange down. Take a quick look at my picture again. Oh, wrong picture. There it is. Yeah, that's about what I want. And over there I need some blue, so. Finish rubbing this over here. I'm gonna put some oil on my hands this time. It's okay to do it that way, too. Just spread this over here. There's not so much orange over here, so... And that's the start of this painting. Now, there's another way that you can also paint with this. I'm just going to put this aside for now. I'll go back to it later. It takes quite a while to dry, so it doesn't matter if I neglect it for a bit. If you want to paint with a brush, and a lot of people do, I think most people do, you can. All you have to do is cut off a little bit. I put some paper towel under here so you can see the color. Cut off a little bit. Oh, there's some skin in there. I'm going to take that off. It's so cheap, it doesn't matter if you're throwing some away sometimes, you know, that, and that's a good thing. Here's some orange, and I'll mix this yellow with it. I'm going to put a little bit of the oil, and I'm going to make the paint that you get out of a tube sturdy palette knife. And I kind of enjoy doing this too. It's very satisfying to watch the colors blending. And to watch it turn into a paste. And I can make this as thin as I want. I just grind it. I have, I have a piece of glass on my table. Just so you know, this was from an old end table when we moved here. There was um, some rattan old, old um, end tables, and I saved the glass from that. But I also have this little piece of glass that I work on. I'm doing this for your sake on this big piece. But I have this little piece that I work on. I got this at the Dollar Tree. It was on a dollar, of course, and it had little rubber legs, and it was for putting hot pans on. And it's tempered, so it's not going to break. So here's my paint right here. Again, it needs a little bit more oil. And again, I, I can make this as thin as I want. If I want to be making very thin lines, then I would want it thinner. If I want to leave a texture on my painting, then I would leave it thicker. And I'd want it really nice and smooth, so I just grind it a little while like this. If I end up with extra, I stick it into the tip of a baggie. 
and it holds and just wrap it up tight and it holds pretty well. And I'll show you how this spreads on the canvas. Beautiful, really. It's a beautiful thing. If there's any little lumps, I just rub them out. But again, I can use the paintbrush with this as well. I'm going to find a good paintbrush here. I am not really good at cleaning my brushes. I wish I were, but I'm not. So. Here I can show you if I wanted to use a brush, I could I could brush it on as well. And I could blend all this away later. These don't even belong in this paint. This all doesn't belong in this painting, but it's fine. I like to paint the sides of my painting anyway, so I'll just smear it up into that. So that's what I use. I'm going to put some links below in the comments for where you can get this paint. Now I buy there, there are two manufacturers that I use. One, you have to buy 12 colors the same at a time, and it comes in one of those boxes. Um, and that's what I buy my primary colors, my red, blue, <coughs> excuse me, and my yellow, my black, and my white. And um, because I go through a lot of those, although I don't think I've even used a whole stick of black in the two years I've been living here. Um, then there's other colors that, you know, the secondary colors, the purples and the oranges and the greens. I, um, those I buy from another manufacturer because I can buy one or two at a time. I generally buy like four at a time of those colors. The pink, I like the pink, so I buy like 12 of those at a time anyway. But they're slightly more expensive because I'm not buying them by the case. But um, yeah, they're cheap and they're fun to use and they're easy to use and I highly recommend them. Again, they're called livestock markers or cattle markers or all weather paint sticks check them out online i'll give you the links and have fun with them what have you got to lose except for a few dollars thanks a lot i'll be back with another video soon bye bye